Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play The Yog. This is a really unique indie game that I'm a huge, huge fan of. It's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure type of game. It's in which you play as four citizens of a town, up to four citizens of a town, I should say, who um, basically live out their lives normally until in a pot this kind of unnamed... Well, undescribed apocalypse shows up and destroys the town and then based on our attributes how well we've done throughout the game we have to try to do our best to repair the town from the destruction so as you can see here we've got four different characters that you could play as we've got like this green dude at the bottom who's got like the greatest hair of all time I love him this uh, studly young man uh, on the top, this red, I don't know, kind of like empress-y looking lady. She looks like she's royalty or something. And this blue lady who looks kind of like a wizard to me. So for the sake of this video, I think we're just going to go with these two because you have to play as at least two characters per game. A really cool thing in how that whole system works is that you could do multiplayer with this game in but it's only local, but you could do like couch co-op or something like that, which I'm really looking forward to starting with this channel in the future. The Yogg will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it. Not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives, week by week, unaware. Alright, so this is the main screen for the game. Basically, as you can see, this is our town here, and... It's turn-based, so we, as the blue lady, we get to decide where we want to go. We could go to the hosp hospital, we could go to the alchemy tower, we could go to the arena and do some fights. And as you could see on the right now, those are all of... That's basically our stats for our character. And in each area, we can either increase or, if we make a mistake, lose stats in certain areas. So with her, I think we're going to have her go to the alchemy tower. And let's have her... Let's have her clean the lab first. Uh, might as well clean it before you start making some potions. You spend a week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You're paid one wealth for your labor and you gain one physique and one magic. One day you hear cries for help coming from the next room. Running over to investigate, you see that the alchemists have uh, there have accidentally created an ooze monster. How do you dispatch the ooze? Okay, so we could punch it into submission or blast the ooze with magic. See, punching the ooze will almost certainly use physique, and blasting it with ma magic will definitely take our magic skill. We're kind of even in both of them, but I, I want to turn this lady into a mage. I want to try to focus her like that. So we're going to try b blasting the ooze with magic. You try to blast the ooze with magic, but just end up producing a bouquet of flowers into your hand. Well, that's pretty cool. The other alchemists make short work of the ooze with a dizzying array of magical spells. For the rest of the week, you are ridiculed by the, um, denizens of the tower. That sucks. Embarrassing! <laughs> oh, you lose one charm! That sucks. Alright. So now we're playing as this dude. And basically, with each character, you lose the ability to go where the first person went. So the blue lady w went to the alchemy tower, which means we can't go there anymore. What I'm going to do with each of these characters to show some sort of variety with the blue lady, I'm going to show like a heavily focused character. Like, I'm going to try to focus her on magic, but with this, little, with this dude here, I'm going to have him try to have him go to a certain number of places and maybe build up a variety of skills. So let's have him work in the tavern first. He he can bartend. Uh, m maybe earn some cash or something like that. You spend the weeks serving drinks at the tavern. You earn one wealth in tips and gain two charm. One day while in the tavern, a heated argument erupts between two patrons. Soon enough, fists are flying and everybody seems to be joining in on the violence. Join the fray or break up the fight. Since we got two charm just now, I think we might we might be capable of breaking up the fight more than we would be uh, in joining them. So let's see. You jump on top of a table and yell a plea to the patrons to stop all the violence. 
The patrons ignore you completely and continue attacking one another. You go to sleep that night, thinking a little less of the human race. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> they say that the last time it came, the Yogg devoured houses whole, stole lives, tore families and family members apart. But that was so very, very long ago. Alright. So, in these other areas, going to art places, you could also increase your magical skill. But, I really, since I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna focus hard on this lady, let's have her try to brew a potion this time. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day you hear one of the alchemists shout, Eureka! When you look over to see what he's done, you spot a small, previously dead ferret come to life. I figured out the antidote to death! The alchemist exclaims. The undead ferret lets out a horrific noise and lumbers about slowly. Destroy that abomination or praise the alchemist's accomplishment. Let's see. We don't know if it's bad yet, so let's try praising the alch alchemist's accomplishment. That's amazing, you say, slightly discomforted by the ferret's presence. You didn't hurt the alchemist's feelings. You gain one charm. Okay. Uh, she's... Th that's pretty cool, I guess. Let's try going to the gardens now. We could either landscape or meditate. Um, uh, We only have one wealth built up. But meditating will probably build up our mind. So let's just do some landscaping. You spend the week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one f physique, and earn yourself one wealth. One day on your way home from the park, you come across a golden ring in the grass. We could sell the ring, or we can wear the ring. Alright, with this guy I think I'm either going for charm or wealth, so let's, let's see if we could s Actually, let's wear the ring, it might look nice on us. Upon placing the ring on your finger, Orange glowing markings appear on the outside of the band. The markings unravel themselves from the ring and swirl in front of you. They form into what appears to be a fully armored ghost, radiate, radiating a beautiful orange light. Oh my god, guys, it's Solaire! <laughs> Solaire from Dark Souls. The ghost turns to you and nods before walking away. The ring looks good on you. Ah, oh, how nice. You gain one charm. Alright, well that was interesting. It was on us in a heartbeat. Or so the stories go. The earth shook. The air went still. Alright, back to the alchemy tower with this lady. Let's go ahead and try to brew a potion again. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day while in the tower, one of the alchemists asks you to watch his potion while he's out. Soon after he leaves, the potion begins bubbling out of control. If you don't do something soon, it'll explode! Do we want to throw it out the window or drink it? Let's see. Let's try drinking it. Maybe it'll give us some magical might or something like that. You quickly drink the potion. Your stomach can't seem to handle the potion. Fire erupts from your esophagus, and for a solid minute, you're shooting a jet of fire from between your lips. Oh god, that burns. You lose two physique. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I guess we weren't quite able to handle that one. Let's try going to the slums. We could either pickpocket people or fight crime. Let's try fighting some crime. Maybe that'll do good for us. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one, one mind, one physique, and one finesse. One day while wandering the slums, you notice that a s the stones used to line the road seem to have a certain pattern to them. You don't manage to figure out the mystery, but you still feel pretty smart for noticing the patterns on th of the tiles. You gain one mind. Okay. And then the world was a howling fury. Chaos. Screaming. The sound of all we knew being pulled in half. 
Alright, uh, we didn't get much- well, actually, we did get some more magic skills from here again, so back to the alchemy tower. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two mind, two magic, and one mind. One day, all the alchemists decide to take a break from work and instead throw a cantrip party. One alchemist waves his hands and produces confetti in front of him. Another spawns a seemingly endless number of doves from his sleeves. Then all the alchemists turn to you to see what you can come up with. We could either do a simple trick or a complex trick. Seeing, that, seeing as we have 12 magic, I think we could handle a complex trick. Let's give it a shot. With a snap of your fingers, you bring a chair to life. You sit atop it and ride it around the room. Everybody else is quite impressed. You gain two charm. Awesome for us. Let's see, how charming is... Uh, only a seven, but that's fine. So, let's see, with this dude... Let's go to the palace. The palace might be a nice place for us to visit. We could either do administration work or attend the ball. We're a handsome young lad. Let's go attend the ball. You spend the week attending fancy gatherings. You gain two charm and one finesse. One day, you overhear the jester tell a joke to a group of people. Everyone laughs, but you don't understand the joke at all. Ask for an explanation, or try to figure out the joke on your own. Let's try to figure it out on our own. We, we could handle that, I think. Several hours later, you figure it out, and a small chuckle is had. All that thinking gave your mind a workout. You gain one mind. Good for us. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we once more rebuild? Move on? Be strong? Or have we forgotten? Alright, we're on week five. You could see due to all the heavy fog that the Yogg is slowly coming. Things are not quite as happy as they might seem, or well off as they might seem. The Yogg comes in seven weeks. So we've got week six, and then the Yogg will be upon us. So we don't have much time to finish off whatever we want to accomplish. Let's try cleaning the lab this time. You spend the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You're paid one wealth for your labor and gain one physique and one magic. One day, an artifi um, artificer stops by for a visit. She is a... 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 Uh, Aborned with magical gadgets and gizmos, and is followed everywhere by her clockwork spider. That's pretty cool. The alchemists of the tower all go out of their way to impress the artificer, offering her an array of potions and elixirs. As she's leaving, she, ador uh, she adorns the most charming of the alchemists with a special trinket. Oh, okay, that was interesting. Not much happened concerning us there. Let's try... Let's go back to the tavern again, actually. Let's, let's do some more bartending. You spend the week serving drinks at the tavern. You earn one wealth in tips and gain two charm. One day, a fortune teller sets up at one of the tavern's tables. She offers to read anybody's fortune for a small sum. Well, you know what, Let, we, we, let's have our fortune read. We only have three wealth, we, uh, we could spend a little. You spend one wealth. The fortune teller takes your hand and begins showing you with, showering you with promises of love and wealth. She doesn't really go into any detail, and, and the whole time, you can't help but feel that it is all an act. Underwhelmed and slightly poor, you can't help but feel that you've wasted your money. Oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> the Yogg. It's almost here. Almost. Almost. Alright, as you can see, things are looking really dire here. If I was a member of this town, I'd be quite terrified, to be honest. I might hide in the woods up here. Let's see. Back to the Alchemy Tower. Let's brew a potion for our final time. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. Nothing out of the ordinary happens to you this week. 
Okay, just the usual thing then. Let's finish off our work as this dude by... attending another ball at the palace. You spend the week attending fancy gatherings. You gain two charm and one finesse. One day, you hear somebody shouting something in the hallway. There's a bomb in the palace, they scream. There is a mass panic as people try desperately to escape the palace's walls. Should we locate and disarm the bomb, or run away? Hmm, we've got a lot of charm, but not too much in any of the other skills. I got a feeling that unfortunately we would not be able to find that bomb and save the palace. So let's just get out of there. You get out just before the bomb goes off. A huge explosion occurs, knocking you off your feet and completely wrecking the castle. Alright, so this we were lucky and haven't gotten any of these until week 6, the final week. But there are occurrences that can take place that can actually destroy locations. Now that the palace has been blown up, nobody can go there for the rest of the game which can cause real issues uh, if it happens early on. Luckily for us, it happens the final point that it could happen in the game. <laughs> the storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest pulls us through a grinder, drowns us, crashes us, ruins us. But then it ends. We see the graveyard of our home has become. Our home. Does anything yet live? Is it... Are we past saving? Alright, now this is the final thing. Each of our characters has to choose their role, the role that they want to take in rebuilding the town. There's the leader, the builder, the conjurer, the doctor, the smelter, the tailor, the looter, and the town drunk. All of these, in some way, except for two of them, I... Won't have you guys guess what those two are. <laughs> All of them, except for two of them, are associated with the skills that we've learned that we've achieved all throughout the game. So the blue lady, I think she would probably be best as the conjurer, since she has a lot of skills in magic. Let's try that. You take it upon yourself to help conjure up supplies for the town. With your magic, you summon supplies of the highest caliber. With little effort, you're summoning high-quality lumber and food from out of nowhere. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. Alright, so clearly that helped us a lot. Now let's see what this dude's able to do. Since he's got a lot of charm, I would imagine he would be a good leader for everyone. Let's check that out. You take it upon yourself to be the leader of the survivors. You expertly delegate and prioritize tasks. You give motivating speeches and act as an effective uh, mediator in disputes. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. Alright, now we get to see our ending. And so, we set about our tasks, once more living our lives, this time in a way we might never have expected, or even wanted. But in the end, we flourished. Towns once wrecked and ravaged rose towards the sky. Trees again took root, then blossomed. We all blossomed. And though it took a long while, and though it took a lot from us, our future is bright. Should the Yogg ever return, we will be ready. Alright guys, so we got the, the best ending. There are three possible endings for the main game. There's the worst ending, a mediocre ending and then the flourishing ending and luckily we actually did well enough to succeed with that so after that as you can see here we get to see the special unique ending for each of the characters in the game so with the town fully rebuilt you spend more and more time in the alchemy tower your potion brewing abilities quickly become among the best in the world your health and mana potions are considered world-class delicacies, with people venturing far and wide to buy them. But you never learn how to brew a love potion. 
So unfortunately, our character never finds love, I guess. But hopefully she's happy for the most part. With the town rebuilt, you start a, a topiary design firm. You charge top dollar for high-end designs of shrubs and hedges. People from all across the land seek out your expertise in all things gardening related. You are even named Thim Magazine's most important person of the year at one point. You live the rest of your days out comfortably. Wow! That's actually the most upbeat ending I've ever seen in this game. Well, guys, that was the Yogg. I hope you enjoyed a lot. I, I'm such a huge fan of this game. It's, It's got so much charm in both the music and the art style and the story, quite frankly. Hopefully, within a short time, I'll be coming back to the Yogg with uh, some friends. Uh, friends or family or something like that, and continuing my journey with some partners, so... I'll put- I'll put- I'll also put a link to where you could buy the game in the description, and maybe even- maybe even a link to the green light page on Steam, because this game needs to get on Steam. I love this game a lot. <laughs> Only vote if you guys want to, though. Um, but really, this is a fantastic game. I'm rambling anyways at this point. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and or subscribe. I am the Egg Scrambled Gamer, and I will see you all next time.